Hi everyone, um, my name's Katie or Kat, I'm uh, 31 from um, a little village near Sheffield in the UK and um, I thought I'd start um, a little vlog just to kind of get my thoughts out there really. Um, so yeah, basically um, I've been struggling with mental health like millions of other people around the world at the minute um, but yeah it's been the past three months in particular have been really really hard um, I've been signed off work my anxiety has got really bad my depression has got really bad um, and I kind of wanted to I wanted a way to get my thoughts out. Sometimes um, you don't always feel like talking to people uh, or anyone in particular. Um, I mean, I have an amazing husband. I have family um, around me that love me. I have my two cats and my tortoise, which I love to bits. Um, but sometimes you just don't always feel like talking to anyone in particular. But Talking, getting your thoughts out is a really good way of processing your thoughts and um, whatnot. So I kind of thought that doing this vlog might be a good way for me to process my thoughts um, along my healing process, basically. Um, and I don't even expect anyone to watch this. I'm doing it for me as a way to, um, like I say, process my thoughts um, and whatnot. But um, I think if it helps someone, then that's good. And um, if if somebody, um, if it if it helps someone maybe reach out and get help that they need, then that that's that's a good thing I guess. Um, it's not just going to be about my mental health and things like that. I'm going to put loads of stuff in there but I thought I'd just start by introducing myself um, and just a little bit of um, build up to where I am right now. Sorry if you can hear that by the way, that's my cat having a mad half hour. Um, so basically, um, like I said before, I'm Kat, I'm 31, I'm from uh, a little village near Sheffield in the UK. Uh, I live with my husband, I have two cats and a tortoise, um, very close with my mom and my uh, big sister. Uh, we go out quite a lot, well not a lot, but she's sort of like, she also struggles um, so, and she doesn't have any kids, I don't have any kids, so we kind of lean on each other really, um, things that we don't want our husbands to know, we talk about, things like that, you know. <laughs> um, I guess everyone needs like a, a friend like that. Um, I've also got my, um, my friends, which I don't really see that often, um, due to many things. Uh, obviously we've had the Covid pandemic um, over the past couple of years which has severely impacted my anxiety, especially my social anxiety. Um, but also it's finding the time, you know, like when you work, I usually work full time, a lot of them work, the ones that don't, some they have other commitments, childcare, things like that. So it's not very often that we get to hang out, but when we do it's like nothing you know it's like we see each other every day um and my best friend has a little boy who i love to bits um ha not having children myself um i kind of i feel like he's um i just love him to bits uh so yeah so i have a lot of good things around me um but then since about June last year, I've been really struggling with fatigue um, and a bit of a backstory 
because uh, obviously I'm I'm overweight. I'm a large lady. I actually had a gastric sleeve about three years ago or something like that, and I lost a lot of weight. I lost nearly nine stone in total, and I think I've put I've put at least three or four of that back on. Um, due to a lot of things but mainly the fatigue that I was starting to feel last June uh, which I didn't really realize at the time it was one of those things that as um, I got as it got like towards the end of the year I noticed that I was sleeping a lot more than usual um, and it was affecting my day-to-day -day life. That was probably around October, November that I noticed that. And then gradually it just got worse and worse until at uh, the end of December, I, uh, I work in healthcare, I should say that as well, which honestly has been really stressful over the past couple of years, but um, it got to the point where I had a really, really bad shift at work, really bad shift, and um, on the way home I actually felt myself falling to sleep in the car, it was, I was exhausted and it got to the point where I was dreading going to work because of how it was making me feel and how long I would be sleeping afterwards, and when I say long, I mean I'd get in at like 8pm go to bed at 9, I wouldn't wake up until 11, 12 the next day, have a couple of hours up, have something to eat, and then I'd be falling asleep again and I'd sleep right through until late that night. <clears throat> so it was really affecting me. Um, and then it got to the point where, uh, I think it was the 31st of December, uh, 21 I um, was driving to work and I'd got all these thoughts running through my head like you do when you have anxiety people with anxiety will know what I mean I was so anxious about how work was gonna make me feel how rubbish I was gonna feel I knew how short staff we were I knew that I was gonna be the only support worker again and it just got so much and I started having a panic attack on the way to work in the car I couldn't pull up because I was on a dual carriageway so I couldn't pull up to work like to the side to calm myself down I was having to try and calm myself down in the car it was horrible anyone who's had a panic attack while you're driving will know that it's, it's horrible um, and then the next thing I remember, I was in this parking, at uh, this housing estate, um, and I was like, where am I? Like, how did I get here? I couldn't remember. Pulled up against the side of the road. Um, obviously then I started panicking again. Um, for those who've never experienced a panic attack, they, the symptoms are different for everyone. For me, at that particular time, my heart was racing, I was sweating. Uh, I had tears in my eyes because um, that's just what that's just how my body reacted that time. Sometimes I don't always cry. Sometimes I do. Uh, I was trying to catch my breath. Felt like I couldn't catch my breath. Um, it's just all of those normal panic attack things. Um, but I'd not had one for years. Well, not a proper one like that for for years. So. It was really hard um, and I didn't know where I was um, at the time. I didn't even think about like Google Maps or anything like that. I was just concentrating on where am I um, trying to calm myself down. I managed to ring my husband who came and found me via tracking on my mobile. Um, but that really set things in motion then. Um, and it was kind of a downhill spiral from there, as I'm sure a lot of you will know what it's like. Um, but 
yeah, I went to the doctors that day. She didn't seem concerned about the memory loss, uh, but she didn't explain to me what it could be either. So I was a bit confused about that because that was what was worrying me at that point. Um, she signed me off. Um, then a couple of weeks later, I still was no better. I was, I didn't want to leave the house by myself because of what happened. I didn't want to drive by myself, all this stuff. And obviously the longer you stay in this bubble, the harder it is to get out of it. Um, and yeah, my anxiety has just got worse and worse since. There's been a couple of instances like when I've been in the supermarket, I've had panic attacks and then I'll be in my car and I can't remember like how I've got there, things like that. Um, and straight away when I went to the doctors he gave me a number to self-refer myself to um, a local um, talking therapy uh, program which at the time I thought I don't need this you know I can do this myself and for a person with anxiety talking on the phone is a big trigger for me talking to anyone that I don't know in general, um, things like that. So I kept putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. And it got to the point over three, so it would have been two and a half months, I think, since I saw the doctor. So this was earlier this month. Um, it got to the point where I just didn't want to be here anymore. I was, I just, I was majorly depressed. I still am but the point is at this moment in time it took me to hit rock bottom before I got in touch with this service and I think a lot of people who don't suffer from anxiety and depression they don't realize they think well why didn't you do this why didn't you get in touch with them two months ago you could have been seen by now but when you're full of anxiety, you don't think it's it's so hard to do these things. Even just ringing the doctors for a sick, an extension on my sick note, I get it takes me all day to work up the courage to do it. And it sounds ridiculous. I know it sounds ridiculous, but in that moment, it's the worst feeling ever. And, um, it's like, logically, there's nothing to be scared of, but at that moment in time, my brain thinks there is. So people don't understand who don't suffer with anxiety. But the point is, I hit rock, bo rock bottom. I was ready to quit. <laughs> I was ready to nope out of the world, but um, I didn't. I rang, I apt. Um, which is the local uh, self-help um, talking therapy place and I got an appointment and I was feeling really good about it I then spoke to them and they told me there would be a 26 weeks wait to see a therapist now as you can imagine I did not take that very well um, I was thinking what the hell am I supposed to do in the meantime I can't carry on feeling like this you know so they gave me a second option which was to be referred to another talking therapy but it's all done online and things like that so that's what um, I said if it's quicker then that's what I'll, I'll opt for so I did um, and I have my first appointment with them on Monday, which is tomorrow. So I'm very nervous about that, but I'm also feeling hopeful about it. Um, and that's, that's a very quick overview <laughs> to where I am now as to where I was three months ago. 
it's been very up and down I've barely left the house um, things that I was doing I was streaming on Twitch I stopped that because um, my anxiety is so bad and my depression got so bad I didn't want to do anything I was sat downstairs doing nothing for days on end I couldn't get the motivation to do anything even watch TV I couldn't concentrate on it you know it's things like that people don't realize that's what it's like it's not just depression isn't just having a bad day it's literally you can't function you know I haven't cleaned the house in months I am so ashamed of how my house looks because usually I'm quite house proud um, but I just don't have the energy um, and the physical side of things which is what started this off in the first place the occupational health nurse suggested a couple of things like fibromyalgia and uh, long covid things like that um which i have an appointment at the doctors which i'm going to speak to him about them um but i really want to lose the weight again i want to get back to losing weight get back to things like me and my sister today we went for a walk and it was so nice to get out the house get some fresh air it was a gorgeous day so yeah it was what I needed and I'm hoping to carry on with that um, at least three times a week go for a walk build up my energy, my exercise, because I do want to return to work. Um, but at the minute, I just, I wouldn't be able to do a full shift, um, even a half a shift. I would really struggle with it. So I want to try and do that. I've also started geocaching, which is um, a really fun way to get out and about. If you don't know what it is, give it a Google. In short, it's basically like a treasure hunt. You download an app, people hide little containers with logs in. Some of them have got, um, when I say logs, I mean like a log where people can sign their name, not actual logs. Um, and some people put swappables in, so they'll put little toys for kids and things like that. Um, and basically you use your coordinates on your phone to find geocache you sign it you log it on the app and then you can go find another one it's a bit like a treasure hunt it's really fun and it's motivating to get out there you're not just going for a walk you know you've got the goal so me and my sister did some of that today it was really fun I might do um, like a second uh, I might add some videos um, into the channel as well of our walks and things like that um, but this this is just an introductory video my other videos probably won't be this long they'll probably just be like thoughts things like that uh, but I just wanted to introduce myself give a bit of a backstory about where I am now I should probably also mention that I've always struggled with anxiety and depression. It's not a new thing since I was 11 years old. It's something that I've um, dealt with. So it's not new, but this particular um, flare up, I guess you could call it, uh, has been going on for the past three months. Um, and I've tried talking therapies before which haven't worked so I'm really hoping that this time um, it works but I will give an update once I've had my first meeting and we can see how we get on <laughs> from there um, but yes if you watch this video thank you for watching um, hopefully I'll be uploading two or three times a week um, and hopefully be walking, getting out there, walking. It's spring now over here in the UK so 
hopefully the weather will be nice <laughs> um, so that so that I can get on some walks and just um, start feeling better <laughs> about myself. Um, but thank you for watching, like I said, and uh, hopefully I'll see you all next time. Bye!